Hi guys, welcome to VR Essentials. We're live from Singapore, where you can get your weekly dose of VR educational content and dive into the practical uses of virtual reality. Today, we're gonna to talk about the HP Reverb G2 controllers and the things that really bother me about them and why HP must address these concerns. If you're new to the channel, by the way, nice to meet you. And a big thank you to all our regular subscribers. Today's shout out goes to Ron M, Bota and Alex VR. All right, let's dive in. HP, of course, have done a fantastic job in bringing a VR headset that provides an amazing experience for people, especially newcomers, to virtual reality. Today's video is not so much going to focus on the tracking aspect of the controllers, because even though HP are using what's called visible lighting technology, which means it's a little bit more sensitive in terms of your lighting setup and also the conditions inside of the room compared to, let's say, Oculus who use infrared. So with infrared, you could use, for example, an IR light to make sure you never lose tracking of any kind. But since the previous update on the HP Windows Mixed Reality software, I have to say that the tracking hasn't really been so much of a problem anymore. So that's why I don't want to focus on this. I want to give you more my feel in terms of what it's like to use those controllers inside of your hand whilst you're experiencing and being immersed inside of virtual reality. So as you can see, the controllers look very sparkly and Christmassy with the LEDs there, which look pretty cool. And I'm not so much bothered about the size of the rings either, to be honest. The ring size is not something that causes a lot of problems in the gameplay. It seems to be completely fine when you're doing something like this, when you're shooting something or you're about to take out some kind of archery or something. It's absolutely fine. There's no issue. And also the weight is okay. But my main issue with these controllers, I have to admit, is the actual build and the plastic that they used to create these things. Now, I know we all have different size hands and different width and length of fingers. I mean, but I don't think that my hands are that different to most people. So I'm going to say that I have an average hand. All right, that's all I can say about that. But the first thing is the plastic that they use compared to, let's say, an Oculus Quest Touch controller or a Rift a Touch controller is that it's a very matte kind of sensation, which means that for my skin, and again, we all have different skin, but it tends to feel like it's sticking to my skin, like it's not giving me the sensation that there is some kind of smoothness to the controller. So that can actually, after, you know, quite some time of gameplay, feel like there's a tiny little kind of burning sensation especially when my hands are moving uh, a little bit on the controllers. So that's the first thing. Now, in terms of the weight, it's not something that really bothers me that much, even though it has two AA batteries inside of the controller, they don't feel like weights, like you're doing some kind of gym exercise. Yet, if you compare them to other VR headset controllers, for example, the touch controllers or the Pico Neo 2 controllers, they are heavier. So after maybe 45 minutes of gameplay, you're definitely going to feel like you're holding the controllers in your hand. So it would be great if HP in the future generation of headset controllers, they could either limit it to one AA battery or even better, not have any batteries inside whatsoever. And then we can do like the Pico Neo 2, just plug in the USB inside and use some kind of auto charge battery inside the controllers that ultimately would be lighter as well. Now, as I mentioned, the actual rings themselves are fine. It's not something that really disturbs me, but really what bothers me in these controllers a lot is the actual design of the stem part. Let me explain why. Now, when we look closer at the actual controllers itself, you notice that the way that the plastic is brought together or glued together at the top, it's not actually a rounded shape. It's more of a triangle kind of shape. This means that when you're doing any kind of action whatsoever, well, there is a missing grip kind of issue here because when you're doing large swings, for example, when you're using Racket NX, which is an amazing app where you have to do a lot of swings and move a lot, or, you know, virtual reality tennis, which again, you have to do very hard kind of shots, or even when you're trying to launch grenades in, let's say, Population 1, or those kind of games, it makes it very uncomfortable to the point that you really have to think before you make the throwing action on closer inspection, you'll notice that one side is indeed very round, which is great, but then on the other, it's very flat, which means if you compare it to a tennis racket or to a hammer that you might have in your hands, the grip isn't there, it's not 100%. It doesn't feel super comfortable. So when you're gonna do the throwing, as I just mentioned, all the lashing out very fast, it's 
not gonna be very comfortable. If you compare it to the Oculus Touch controllers, they are more or less round on both sides and equally with the Pico Neo 2 is also round on both sides, which means that even though these controllers don't look amazing, believe me, and there are some faults to it, but I have to admit that I much prefer using my Pico Neo 2 when I'm doing Racket NX or when I'm doing some virtual reality tennis or any game that involves a lot of throwing or slashing, then I definitely use my Pico Neo 2 much more. Now the quality of the plastic that HP had probably used for the Reverb G2 isn't I would say the best of quality, but I also feel it's probably a good enough quality to make sure it doesn't break. However, the issue that I have is because you don't have the continuity between one side and the other and it's not round, well basically it means that when you're going to be holding something with a tighter grip, you're going to see that once you apply some pressure, you're going to feel like the plastic is actually about to break, which of course it's not going to break, but it gives you that sensation, which again makes it feel a little bit uncomfortable during the gameplay. When I used to use the Oculus Quest, I never had that issue whatsoever because there was an equal amount of spacing on both sides when I was holding the touch controllers and equally with the Pico Neo 2 controllers because they're both the same on both sides, I don't have that issue either, which means I don't have that broken sense of immersion from time to time. I also feel that the actual length of the stem was made for people who have smaller hands because for me, when I wear it, they're simply too short and they don't feel snug inside of my hands. If only they were an inch longer, I think it would be just perfect. Now, another aspect of the controller that bothers me personally, now maybe this is something that to you is not gonna be a big deal. This is specifically because, you know, I like to create content live on YouTube or other social media platforms. And one of the things I've noticed a lot is the actual sound of the controllers. I mean, have you heard this? I mean, they're very, very loud and the mic picks it up all the time. It would be great if HP could work with the manufacturer to try and see how they could fit the mold in a way or the spring so that it's a little bit gentle, a little bit softer and more natural so that again, it doesn't break that immersion when we're immersed in virtual reality with the HP Reverb G2. 